Hello, everybody, and welcome to another confusing edition of Club Muffet Talks. I am one of your hosts, Chris, the one of the instruction librarians. And I'm Joe, and I'm also an instructional librarian here at Muffet Library. And I'm Ryan. I am the Associate University Librarian for Public Services. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be really talking about anything going on uh, on campus. We're not going to be talking about... Uh, uh academic kind of topics uh today we're actually since it's the first of the year it's a new beginning it's a um fresh coat of paint on life i don't know I'm babbling um basically we all just got back from break and we're all still trying to um become alive again so we're going to be talking about uh, other things that were uh that we um experienced for the first time or our first experiences with something else um and i guess we can just jump right into it unless there's something else that uh, either of you wanted to talk about before we got into the list no nah, we can go for it okay and i'm going to intersperse these with a few of the other things that you uh sent us earlier uh, these legal firsts and i would not do them otherwise if not for the fact that i was watching a television show that kind of talked about some of these so uh let's go ahead and jump into this the first album that you bought, Ryan? First album that I bought. Well, the, the prompt was the first album I ever owned, and then it was the first album I ever bought. So let me let me do this real quick. Um, this is the first album I ever owned. Okay. Mostly because my parents saw this in the theater when they were drunk and thought it was the most hilarious thing of all time. <laughs> so they went that's out a, and I mean, bought the one. album and then realized once they sobered up, it wasn't near as funny as they thought it was. So this was in the house when I was my earliest memories of being three and learning how to put this on the record player to play it. Wow. First money, first movie, uh, first record I ever bought was this also an album, an actual album album. So and I would have been 12 or 13 when I bought this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, my, I got, I got a portable uh, record player for Christmas um, when I was in fifth or sixth grade. And with the portable record player, I was given the Glenn Campbell album, Rhinestone Cowboy. Now, let me just say, and this is not any comment against Glenn Campbell or his music at all, but that particular album, Rhinestone, Cam Rhinestone Cowboy, is probably the happiest song on that album. It is a terrible, terrible album to give like a 12-year-old kid. It, I mean, it's just depressing, terrible. <laughs> now, with my own money, like my next birthday, my I spent my birthday money and I bought a soundtrack album and I got the soundtrack for uh, for Dr. Doolittle. This would be the 1967 Rex Harrison musical. Um, and that, yeah, that's the first one that I, I, I bought. Interesting. Uh, the first album I ever bought was um, the Tomorrow Never Dies soundtrack, I think. So I wanted to hear the James Bond theme. Not the theme of Tomorrow Never Dies. I wanted to hear the the main like the the theme that's been for james bond for forever sure it, yeah. it was just it was just out i don't know probably should have bought golden eye but that's the one that was in the store um yeah. or or was it the godzilla 99 soundtrack no that might have been the first one i ever owned actually uh -huh. um i think actually the first one i ever bought might have been pink floyd the wall okay which these days not even in my top three Pink Floyd albums, I don't think, but it, it was a good introduction. It's probably the one I would still say is the, the best introduction of Pink Floyd. Um, but yeah, somewhere since the next question actually is the first album you own, so I'm going to say one of those three. I don't remember, <laughs> but um, you can, you can probably uh, just toss it in the air and it's going to be one of those. I, I don't remember. Tomorrow Never Dies... Godzilla 99 soundtrack or uh uh Pink Floyd the Wall. I don't remember. 
By the way, Joe, if you'd asked me what my first song was that I loved to hear on the radio, uh -huh. it would have been Rhinestone Cowboy, actually. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I remember listening to it on the radio and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's not not really a kid friendly album. I, yeah. I can say it that way. Now the song now, was perfect because I would have been what five or six. I'm a little bit younger than you. A little. I would have been five or six when it came out, and I just love that song. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I may still have the lyrics memorized. I mean, I'm not going to attempt it now or anything, but I, I probably still have that in my head. I will say about your Robin Hood album, um, when I know or believe that I'm alone in the library, uh, like in the stairwell or in a bathroom or something, I will whistle the music from from that Robin Hood. <laughs> it's a good album. It really is. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, but since you mentioned the you liked that was your first song that you like to hear on the radio mine was uh smells like teen spirit um never mind would have been the first album i bought but um my parents had a real big problem with the album art um so i had to have a friend uh obtain it for me um <laughs> which did not have that cover art uh it also didn't have lithium uh, for whatever reason he burned the cd and he didn't have lithium on it so it was imperfect <laughs> um but yeah, that was that was the one. And by the time I was really into Nirvana, that song was almost completely off the radio because it was in that weird limbo between classic and modern rock. So you would hear it like maybe once a week. And whenever I, whenever I heard it, it was like, stop everything, listen, listen to Smells Like Teen Spirit, then go about my day. I have no recollection as to what the first song I really listened to nonstop. I know that in high school, I didn't go a week without listening to the entire uh, album of uh, Meat Loaf Spat Out of Hell. Well, in high school, I actually woke up because I had one of the first digital tape player radios that would actually play a song mm -hmm. for you to wake up instead of an alarm. And I actually had uh, the Yes album, uh, 9012, uh, uh, I want to say 90125 um, uh, album uh, actually uh, but that's not it um, uh, in my in my in that tape player that woke me up every single morning for mm -hmm. high school how furiously annoyed are you now that the that yes's entire cultural um, existence is uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is it okay yeah uh, it's the the intro to roundabout is the uh, well actually all of roundabout is the the closing theme to parts one and two but um that little like the guitar intro is the uh that became a meme on its own so hey at least their grandkids are getting paid so good for them there you go yeah yeah <laughs> um do you two want to talk about the first albums that you owned or is that kind of just wrapped into yeah, we um, soundtracks were popular again. I was into Star Wars. Return of the Jedi was the one where actually I, I, I went to the store, looked around, picked it up, and bought it with my own money. That was the first album I remember buying with my own money. I may have had some albums before that. I might have asked for for Christmas or, or for birthdays or something like that. But I remember that one being the first one I, I, I paid for. Um, like that. Um, I could have gotten a cas in the cassette, and I struggled between the um getting the vinyl or getting the cassette, and I went with the the album, actually. You went with a better choice. How often did you skip uh, Nup Yup or Yup Nup or whatever that song is? Uh, that, that was at the very end, so I could I didn't have to. But I, <laughs> what I listened to a lot was the one where um, Luke is on the, um, being thrown into the uh, the mouth, basically. Oh, where yeah. He drops down and it goes, dunt, dunt, dunt. And then suddenly it hits, and there's, it's this... A spectacular um, um, uh, thing going on. I had a friend who had the, the um, Empire Strikes Back, which I wanted that one too because that had the Emperor's March in it, which is the mm. dun 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 dun. Yeah, dun. The, but but Return of the Jedi is where they they uh, first introduced the um, the Emperor's theme, the the chorus. Okay, I think so. I think that's what it is. But yeah, that the Luke falling into the Sarlacc pit where it, yeah. it does the the trumpet and then it's like it pauses for a second and then it goes into luke's theme 
right before he he force pulls the lightsaber. I love that that uh that little bit. Sorry, if no one's you, if Jim. no one is aware yet, I love the original Star Wars trilogy. <clears throat> so let's go to our next one. Uh, the first book that made you cry. First book that made me cry. I don't know. I have my first book that I that I had that I ever got. The first one you bought. Yeah. I have the first one I bought, yeah. which was before I could read. <laughs> I don't remember the first. I don't think any books ever made me cry. Joe? The first book that I remember making me cry was uh, Johnny Tremaine uh, by Esther Forbes. It's a historical fiction book. Uh, takes place around the American Revolution. Main characters uh, like a silversmith. Um, I remember seeing the Disney movie for it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think I saw it in school. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the first book I bought was the uh, first Witch World book uh, by by Andre Norton. Well, I'm going to share my screen again because I have the first book I ever owned. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've ever bought, basically. Mm -hmm. And it is this book. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Which explains why I said I couldn't read yet. So sure, yeah. I mean, you look at those pictures. I mean, that's that's half the reason why they had those detailed pictures and then those in the first place. Yeah. I like uh, I like the ape on the cover, the, the ape with the wings in the cover. It reminded me of the flying monkeys. <laughs> oh, from uh Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Mine was the ninth book in the Red Ball series, The Pearls of Letra, I think. Now, speaking of which, um, one of the things I mentioned we should have done is the first book you ever checked out of the library. You guys either want to remember what that is? Um, Might have been Willy Wonka in elementary. Um, could have been a I, Dr. Seuss book. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't really remember going to a library until I was in high school. Uh, our house was full of books, and I belonged to the children's versions of the, you know, like Book of the Month Club and stuff like that. So we had books in the house, and I know that like uh, the like elementary schools or whatever had a, a school library. But I don't really remember going going to the library to get books until I was in high school and I went to the, the public library in Burke Burnett. And it's entirely possible that the first book that I checked out was like um, Erica Young's Fear of Flying. Well, I do remember the first book I ever, I ever checked out of the library. And once again, it was before I could read. Sure. It was this. Oh, nice. Oh, of course. Yeah. I've never read The Wizard of Oz. I've only seen the movie. Again, this, is, the this has the great illustrations by W.W. Denslow. They're just fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, this, by the way, is the first library I ever went to. This is um, the Bennett Major Library in downtown Lincoln, Nebraska. And this is the water park that was next to it that had that sold popcorn and ice cream after we went to the library. I think my mother was trying to do phys was trying to do um, positive reinforcement about how wonderful libraries were. So nice, it, it worked. I, I, you know, I like the kind of brutalism of that library, but I much prefer the water uh, the water park, <laughs> water whatever thing. Yeah. Um. Before we go into the rest of this list, let's go into our legal firsts that you just yeah. sent us today, Joe. Yeah. Um. Did you know the first time a woman could open a bank account uh, wasn't until 1950 or the 1950s? Although, um, well, hold on. Um, oh, no, I, I misread that. Uh, although in 1950, the number of working women was on the rise, they were still not allowed to open a bank account. Uh, they were making their own money, but they weren't allowed to have a bank account to save it. It wasn't until the 60s when women gained the right to open their own bank account. Yeah, uh, I I was mentioning that I'm watching uh, I'm watching Mad Men right now, and yeah. um, that's becoming a major plot point is like women's suffrage and women's rights, like just to be able to do all this other stuff. And yeah, you, it, it's really stark to see all that stuff and like where it looks modern, 
Mad Men's a really good show. It's it's really like the costume design's great. But um the fact that it's like women are not taken seriously in the workforce, they can't have uh like bank accounts, they can't have their houses in their name, it's it's really striking. Yeah. <clears throat> That's my plug for Mad Men. Watch it if you haven't, it's really good. Yeah, uh, I, I I had pulled some of those uh, legal firsts just off, uh, you know, uh, off the internet, and uh, I was surprised by how many of them were within my lifetime, <laughs> uh, because you, we like to think that we're, you know, a civilized nation. Uh, and and we prefer to not think of ourselves as a third world nation with you know horrific systemic issues. Uh, we don't like to think of ourselves that way. But you know, I mean, like uh, anyone that's listening to our broadcast or watching it uh, was born before same sex marriage was legalized because that hasn't even been legal for ten years now. When I was born, uh, interracial marriage wasn't legal. So, you know, uh, and you know, we we with, without giving numbers or anything, I'm not old, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, so 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 for these things to come so late uh, is sad. Yeah, when you hear stuff like like I I think about my grandfather being uh in World War II or whatever, but then I'll I'll hear some stuff where it's like like I'll see a picture of like desegregation and and like the civil rights movements and and like you'll see pictures from that stuff. But it's not until you see something that's like here is a picture of current cowboy or Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones fighting desegregation in a picture and the only thing he had to say in defense was it was a different time that makes it feel a lot a lot more recent than just it was you know something that your grandfather or your great grandfather went through it's like this is a person who's extremely rich with a lot of uh, even political power right now like jerry jones does a lot of uh political fundraising and, and donations and stuff in charge of one of the biggest franchises in the country if not the world and it's really shocking and, and kind of disheartening to to see that that stuff's so fresh in our history on the other hand i'll go the other opposite direction the fact that we've moved so far in such a short period of time people forget the other side of it the fact that people are like you know why aren't things happening more quickly and i'm kind of like have you realized how quickly things have happened in the last 50 years or so yeah yeah that's also a really good point to think of it like it's that can make it seem a little, I don't know, a little better. Like the Civil War is only, what, 160 years ago? 150 and some change? Like that's, when you look at the total length of human history, that's not long ago if you really think about it. Yeah. 140, but yeah. Yeah, in that area. <laughs> no, you're right. You're 150. You're right. You're right. You're right. It is the year 2022. Uh, it's much later on. It's twenty twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty three. My daughter is a year old. <laughs> All right, we're moving first, on. Who's your yeah, first celebrity let, crush? Let, let, let's. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about mine. And first off, I'm hesitant to do this one because I know this is gonna become the thumbnail for okay. the uh for the thing. Um. When I was a when I was a young child, again, most of my answers are gonna be very young. Um, I was really into dinosaurs, and so I, I caught every single dinosaur movie ever. Uh -huh. And this is the first time watching a movie where dinosaurs weren't the thing that was really enticing me to watch this movie, and I didn't quite know what was going on. Why why was I interested in this? This has nothing to do with dinosaurs. This is from the 1977 film "The People That Time Forgot." And this is Miss Dana Gillespie in that film. Yeah. 
you know what? You've shown me this image before. You show me this. Uh, this I have. Particular actress and, and it was. It's thing. interesting as I had forgotten about this until <laughs> I saw the film again, and suddenly I, I had this uh, like a flashback of being like. I must have been nine at the time or something like that and going, oh, wow, that was the first time I became aware that I was attracted to people. Well, it was, yeah, the, the first time you were like, oh, yeah, wait, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> that that one where it feels like your heart stopped for a second. Yeah. And uh, uh, this it did have an effect on me because all throughout the 80s, I remember all the various one we had was celebrity crushes. And I remember all the celebrity crushes were all British brunettes. I don't know why, but and then I saw this again. I'm like, oh, that's oh, why. Yeah. that's why. Okay, that's why all uh, my celebrity crushes were uh, were 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 British br br brunette actresses during the 1980s. Okay, okay. Well, you've both seen my wife, so this is not going to be any any shocker to you that this is uh, my first celebrity crush. But um, my first celebrity crush was uh, Alicia Silverstone. Hmm. Oh, okay. Which that was a joke. She doesn't look. Like, a thing like my <laughs> wife or or even the the types of, of women that i've dated in the past i don't know um i was built different back then i don't know uh but yeah no i i remember uh going home for lunch one day and um i like i was going off to to make food or whatever and like i caught something out of the corner of my eye and i said is that alicia silverstone in this movie right now and hannah was my wife was like yeah she's like oh okay I just sensed it. I didn't even see her on the screen. I was just like, like I had the new type flash from Gundam. Like, <laughs> is Alicia Silverstone on the screen right now? Um, that's it. Yeah. That's my whole story. My my first celebrity crush, as far as I can recall, was uh, Christy McNichol. She was doing a TV series called Family, and she would run around in her little tracksuit jacket, ride on a skateboard, and she was just so cool. Yeah. Well, I'm sure everyone's having a great time listening to a, a bunch of um, old white guys talking about the, the women that they have a crush on. So let's go into our next category of first. First fictional character crush. Yeah. Just to, just to dive bomb deeper into the subject. Bulma from Dragon Ball. I'm just going to say that. I couldn't <laughs> think of like who my first fictional crush was. But I was like, I don't know. Bulma's been around for a while. Yeah. I started watching Dragon Ball when I was in early middle school, I think. So it's the first time I think I can really, like, as far back as I can remember. Um, I, I think... And and I, I wrote down two answers to that because I actually wrote down my answers. Um, and I think it was either Morticia Adams oh, or yeah, Barbara okay. Gordon. I'm stupid. Yeah, it was Morticia. <laughs> how, how about you, Ryan? I don't know if I have an answer to this because my imagination was always so much more fruitful than anything that I could see on TV sometimes. Sure. So. See that so was by the time by the time I was I, I was I was crush age, my imagination was going full blast beyond anything I saw on television. See, this is this is I joked saying Alicia Silverstone, but then I I remember I remember Morticia Adams, and I say, oh, that's right. There you go. Um. Oh, here's a this is a fun one. What was your first job that I got paid for? Yeah. yeah, sure. I'll I'll give two answers here because it was my first job I actually had is this was interesting. This was um, the Parks and Recreation Department of my hometown would basically they had a um, a thing they do every year where they get volunteer kids in and they teach them how to make and manipulate puppets. Oh. And then what they would do is they drive around with a, a trailer, which was a big puppet stage on wheels, basically. And we would perform for other smaller kids in the neighborhood. And I did that from the age of 13 to the age of 15, I think. Cool. It wasn't paid for it, because, but it, it was because it was basically, it was a way for early teenagers to go do something interesting and stuff like that. But looking back on it, it was a job. I mean, I was... Strictly speaking, doing a service for 
the uh, Parks and Recreation Department to some extent. So. And you had to apply skills and... Oh, yeah. No, it was thing. the first but, yeah. time where the, the person who was the director of it handed me a a electric saw and go went just looked at me and went, yeah, go to it. And I'm like, you're not going to supervise or anything? No. Have at that's, it. That's your first internship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first paying job was the summer after that. I became a bagger and um, yeah, I bagged groceries until I got hit by a car, stumbled into the uh, into the uh, supermarket, bloody with my pants ripped. Just looked at the uh, the manager and thing. I just said, "I quit." <laughs> and I think I yeah. called my parents to have them come pick me up. That'll do it. <laughs> um. This is this might come as a surprise. I actually have two answers as well. This this actually will come as a surprise. Though my first job was um, a handyman at a uh, a uh, gardening like potting, oh. uh, like local owned business. Uh, I worked there for about two months. Um, and I started to get kind of sick in the last few like weeks there and the last day i worked there i um i was asked to mow their front lawn and i caught bronchitis pretty much that day like it was it i i went from kind of feeling ill to like i couldn't stand up anymore and then i heard one of the owners uh this this nasty old lady talking about how lazy and worthless i was being so i said you know what i'm out uh, I'll I'll come pick up my last check tomorrow, and then went to the doctor like a week later, and they were like, "Yeah, you're like you're like this close to pneumonia at the moment, so yeah, we need to get you on antibiotics really bad." Um, then after that, a few months later, I started working at movie gallery um, or Hollywood Video, whatever they call it. Uh, most places had a Hollywood Video, and my uh, hometown we had a movie gallery, same company or whatever. But I worked there for a year and a half, two years, maybe. Um, I actually, I, I didn't mind it, but it was really dull. And the customer base in my small hometown was really uh, cruel and um, argumentative. So, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't quite enjoy that job as much as I thought it would. I, uh, I did. I mean, I did babysitting and lawn mowing and stuff like that. I. And I uh, started my own neighborhood newsletter that I oh. got subscriptions for. Uh, but my first paycheck job, uh, I worked uh, fast food. I worked at uh, Hardee's um, like as soon as I could when I was 16 or whatever. And I worked there for a couple of months and then... Um, stopped because I was doing a summer session of college. I was still in high school, but there was a thing that I was able to do back then where I was getting college credit hours over the summer, and I didn't think I could do that and, and work at the same time. First time I ever had a Carl's Jr. Hardee's whatever burger, I took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook, and I said, "This is they should call this hardly a burger. It was a small burger. That's the whole. That's, I I, that's I, I got that. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm sorry that you had had that experience. I need a. I, I need. A I am no longer burger. a paid representative, so I can't really compensate I, you for that. I, I don't. Have yeah. We, the the rest of this is going to be me telling you my grievances over my very small burger. <laughs> my first, my first and only experience with Carl's Jr. Hardee's. Um. The age of your when you had your first kiss. Yeah. Is that six? six? Um, I was if you're if we're going that far back, five for me, but I that's think the one I remember as my first kiss. I don't remember yeah. past that. And I did, but I have no idea. That's that's what stuck in my mind as my first kiss to somebody oh, on the first, lips. First make out was uh like that there was on a high school bus after a band thing and i was 13 i think um but otherwise yeah like five kindergarten like little kid kiss um, if we're going that far back yeah I, I i don't have a memory of that and honestly i don't think i i did that i i think my first was like freshman year of high school i was like 14 or 15 
Yeah. Yeah. The freshman year. Yeah. That seems yeah. like the, yeah. Uh, live concert. Yeah. First live concert. Well, let me share. Mine was the Big Generator Tour by Yes in 1988. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Joe? That was a... Oh, sorry. I, I didn't know I'm you sorry, were that was, the, going. that was that was I didn't have a poster for it. That's the that's the t-shirt that I actually I didn't buy that t-shirt, but that's the style of t-shirt I bought. My oh. my first live concert was Leif Garrett. Who is who is probably better known for his acting, and nowadays isn't even known for that. Um, and uh, I I bought an, a a forty five record album, uh, a little single forty five of of his hit song, "Come Back When You Grow Up, Girl." Um, yeah, it was in it was like nineteen. 80 yeah hmm. oh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I went to a lot of uh live like local shows like local heavy metal rock whatever stuff with my dad and I highly regret it uh when I was in high school I was like 14 15 definitely a bad choice um first real real band that I saw live probably was um I took um, my current wife, then girlfriend, to um, Riverfest in Little Rock. Um, oh, no, no, no! I went to I went to um, American Idol um, with the year they had that Chris Lambert got the second place, I think, with uh, an ex girlfriend. Um, that's whatever. It's American Idol. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> uh, first one that I can that I can think that was like really like. I finally got to a live show. Yeah, it was a uh, River Fest. It was like, I don't know, 2013, 2014, maybe. I, I can't remember exactly when, but we saw Chicago, uh, the Wallflowers, a um, bunch of, bunch of uh, really neat bands there. Um, we actually got to see uh, Chicago play, um, uh, what's it called? The Inspiration? Is that the song? Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah, we got to see that live. Uh you're the inspiration. That's it. Um, so that was the song that my wife walked down the aisle to. Uh oh. whenever we got married. So yeah, that one was a very, very important first yeah. show, or technically first show for me. Um, but yeah, a few. That's the one that I would most prefer to consider my first uh live show though. I was going to say I I I have seen better concerts than that one, but 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 that that was the first. Yeah, the first big one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that same year, I also saw Jethro Tull. I saw Rush. I oh. saw Pink Floyd. I saw. Um... No, I think that was everyone. I'd love to have seen Pink Floyd back then. I mean, I wasn't born, but one of the worst nights of, of my life. Everyone else um, dropped out of seeing it with me, so I went there alone. Hmm. Uh, my car stalled out because there was a three mile backup to get into Texas Stadium to see the uh, to see Pink Floyd. My car overheated, and I had to push it off to the side, basically. It's terrible, um, and I had to walk the rest of the way in. I showed up late, and then I had to walk all the way back to my. Uh, to my car again, hopefully get it fueled up uh, with water again. Hopefully it started again. It did. I didn't get home until about 4 a.m. on a school night. My mom was beside herself about it. Yeah. I'm surprised you're still among the living. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, that that sounds like an overall terrible experience. Was was Did you enjoy what part of the concert you saw? I did. Um now there was a haze and funny smell throughout the entire um, stadium at the time, so that uh -huh. may have, that may have been why I enjoyed it more and didn't kind of got to relax after that harrowing experience before that. Sure. Yeah, must have been their recreation of uh, the trial. But I was only seventeen when I did that too, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna step aside and go back to another legal first, and this one's okay. just mind boggling. Uh, same sex did not become same sex marriage did not become legal until 2015. Yeah, I that's basically yesterday. Um, it's frustrating and really saddening, especially that we've seen some politicians in very very recent like months say that that they find that to be to have been a mistake uh that's just horrible and dehumanizing and and disheartening but it's basically codified into law right now so it's i I hope that we never go back to that time Uh, yeah what was the first type of pet you had my first pet that was actually ours uh because we had we had uh, access to like a neighborhood pet when I was younger. It's like just this dog, like like in the Disney Lady and the Tramp. He just roamed around and everywhere he went, somebody fed him and, you know, like that. Uh, but the first pet that was ours was a was a Border Collie. Oh, that we got from like the uh, from the shelter. <clears throat> Those things are, uh, those things require a lot of space to run around to be really happy. Yeah, and we did not have a lot of space. Uh, at the time, we were in a, a townhouse apartment, uh, so we had a relatively small yard, um, but uh, that 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 dog was mostly an inside dog. Uh, we are we were actually also up north then. We were in o- Ohio, and uh, so so mostly just stayed inside, hung out on the couch and stuff. Just went outside when it was necessary. But yeah, yeah. Uh, my first was if you're talking my first first was three tetras, which is a type of fish. In an aquarium named Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh, perfect. Um, nice. It was, no, it was not perfect. As a young <laughs> child, that was that did not meet my emotional needs. So a year later, we got a um, a Sheldy uh, Golden Retriever mix. Oh, cute. Very uh, cute dog. My mom's raised pit bulls forever, so that's all the pets I had when I was a kid were all pit bulls. Hmm. Not the not the cute kind either with the big fluffy ears because or the floppy ones because my mom liked to show dogs and mm-hmm. yeah they're not as cute when they're mutilated like that. Yeah, it's it's amazing how mutilation reduces cuteness. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you? Isn't that kind of crazy? How mutilation can can make things not quite cuddly and cute. Anyway, uh, what's the first? Did we did we say first movie that we remember seeing? Did we say that? No, did we say no, we haven't yet. I'll start because I've got my shared screen thing. Okay. Uh, first movie I remember seeing was the television premiere of this film, and I was obsessed with it. Um. So. Cool. <sighs> The first... now, I also had the first movie I saw in the theater, which I'll um, do as well real quick. Yeah. This shouldn't come yeah. to any surprise. I I actually had to go back and actually look at all of the uh all of the various films and when they came out. And I'm pretty sure this is the first film I wanted to see in the theater. Ah. Actually, I take that back. This is the first film I saw in the theater. This is the film I wanted to see. Oh. I to see it. That is that is a good one. Because this that. looked awesome. Yeah, this looks stupid. That looks lame. Uh, actually, the one the edit of that that someone did of uh, Seinfeld is, I think, a, a much better poster. Um, but my first, dad said, "No, we're going to take you Star Wars. Uh, uh, we're not going to take you to Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger." And I was like, "Oh, that's not what I wanted." <laughs> Drat. Uh, first movie that I both remember watching and that I saw in the theater for the first time was Jurassic Park, and I think I was three. That was also a mistake. Uh, apparently, I threw popcorn and some lady's hair in front of me. I went down the aisle telling people to shush. Uh, uh, I was told that I uh, 
made a uh, condescending noise when uh, Samuel L. Jackson said, hold on to your butts. No one should have taken me to see that film at three. There's a, Samuel L. Jackson gets his arm ripped off and you see it dangling bloodied on a fence. A kid's film. <laughs> it's got dinosaurs in it. Mm-hmm. It should have taken me to see Tammy and the T-Rex. Uh, my my dad took me to see Jaws when I was like ten. Okay, so that yeah, kept, yeah that tops it. Uh, <laughs> well, I will say that the first movie I ever saw at the drive-in theater this would have been when I was eight. Damon Omian. Okay, Omen two. I I I I had a better drive-in experience than 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 that then. <clears throat> The the first movie that I remember seeing, it was was at a drive-in, and it was like, I guess it was probably during the summer when they were showing old movies, you know, and it was a Disney double feature, and I don't remember which order they were in, but it was uh, Alice in Wonderland and uh, 101 Dalmatians. Mm. Um, the first movie that I know that I saw in a theater and honestly there were probably ones prior to this that i saw with my family when i was younger but the first one that i remember seeing in a theater was doc savage man of bronze oh that's actually okay yeah and and uh we we like went to see it as part of uh, a family friend's birthday celebration yeah hmm all right. So I, I I have a, a an image in my head of of people in the audience like googling this stuff and being like, "What are they talking?" <laughs> about? You almost got me doing that. Um, what is the story behind your first scar? Okay, I've I, I've I've got mine. I have a tiny scar on my heel of heel of my palm here uh and that's that's the oldest one that i remember where it came from Hmm. uh i was about eight years old and i fell on a trail uh in at flint mountain and and sliced my hand open on a rock i don't know what my first scar was i have a scar on here but then it's basically from a little pole top uh, that I remember scarring up. But I used to skin my knees every summer as a kid. Sure. I probably got some scars from that. I also remember the first time I went to the hospital because of an injury. I had they had to pull a like a three inch splinter out of my leg when I was like four or five. So mm-hmm. um, that probably counts. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I can't remember which of these came first, so I'll just say both of them. Um, I was talking to a friend. And like, I think I was eight or seven or something. I was really, really young. And I turned my face directly into like one of those, uh, the push door locks, whatever. And I got like a really deep scar right here under my eye. I don't even know how it got, like how it scarred like that, but I still have it. Hmm. The other I have, uh, I'm not going to raise my middle finger to the audience because that would as funny as that would be i'm not going to do it um i have a scar on this finger here where i was watching the transformers movie and i had my feet up on the entertainment center and the giant tv we had fell directly on me and i remember trying to get up and run away from it and it fell directly on my back and somehow it scratched right across my my middle finger so um I still really like the Transformers movie, for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah, I'm not sure which of those came first, but yeah, they they're both pretty vivid. What is the thing you bought with your first paycheck? I'm gonna do this uh, to be more professorial. Well, I'll start with me because my answer is kind of boring. I'm pretty sure I put my first check or paycheck directly into the bank. It didn't spend on, on anything. Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing, but uh, I um, think I bought the the remake of the first Star Ocean 
video game on PSP. Pretty sure that's what I bought, bought with my first uh, paycheck. Still like that game a whole lot too, but yeah, I'm fairly positive. This may not be the thing that I did actually first spend money on from from my paycheck, but the thing that I remember buying with with my my paycheck was a, a pair of shoes. Um, not for work, just shoes that I liked that I thought were cool. Um, I think they were British Knights. Hmm. Um, and they were fairly expensive to me at the time, anyway. Well, of course. The, the uh, first thing that you buy always feels like this this giant, like colossal pile of money that you're putting down for a good. Yeah. Um, now, I do remember the first thing I bought with my allowance when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. And that is, once again, I'm going to share. What's this? Oh, of nice. Course. <laughs> that that guy's a star now. I've seen him in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. What's the first thing you do when you go home? When you get home, what's the first thing that you do? If you do anything consistently. Take off my shoes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that's one of the first things, but usually the first thing I do is take all the stuff out of my pockets. I just oh, do it yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'll like, like, I'll take off my watch and, you know, take out my wallet and phone and keys and, yeah, and then kick off the shoes. Then the next thing for me is check the mailbox in front, and then I go about my business whatever I'm doing at home. Sure, sure. Yeah, um, I, it's that that is a thing, and it's 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 a it's a sad thing because I I don't actually like wearing shoes. I would rather be barefoot, but I have really soft, sensitive feet, so I can't do that. And the way that you make yourself not have soft, sensitive feet is to go around in dangerous places without your shoes on. Run around like, the mountaintops. Develop them into so that you have your, a whole callus on your foot, you know. Um, and 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 I'm not I'm not willing to do that. When I was a child, my parents had a gravel driveway. You could you could bounce bullets off the soles of my feet. I mean. Uh... <clears throat> I I'm pick no up my daughter way. and give her a kiss on the cheek. Oh, and then I go one. find food. Yeah. <laughs> like if we have to cook something, I'll like I'll hold I'll hold her with one hand and like go through the fridge and you know depending on whatever it is that we're cooking that night, I'll start sure. getting getting it ready. Yeah. And then I put her down and she cries and screams at me. Do you want to say the thing you you mentioned to me the other day? Uh. Oh yeah, uh, yesterday we took her to her one year appointment, and um, we're we're trying to get her to respond to her name more often. Um, so I mentioned to the doctor that like we we try to say her name and get her to like come over here and do stuff and like you know um, acknowledge that that's what her name is. And the doctor said, "Oh no, no, I, I can tell from the way that she like like her mannerisms and stuff just now. She did hear you. She's just ignoring you." <laughs> She is your daughter. <laughs> yeah, really. That's I looked at I looked at Hannah, my wife, and I said, "Which one of us did she get that from?" And she was like, "I could be either way. Yeah. It's a toss up." Uh, oh, this is fun. What's the first thing you learned to cook? I have no idea. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I was cooking by the time I was a uh, freshman or sophomore in college, but I have no idea what. What I, how I learned it or or what I was doing to get to that point. Yeah. Omelette. Omelette, yeah. It was the first thing that uh that I ever cooked for my wife too. It was uh, our first oh, nice. date. Our first date, I whipped up an omelette. I was like, here, you're going to love this. And she loved it. That's great. And now look. <clears throat> Cooking Go works. Out there, learn how to cook an egg dish. That's the, that's the one advice I could give for you. Cook something that's really good and involves eggs. Well, now eggs are expensive. So I know. Uh, How weird is that? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh I I do know that uh eggs are one of the first things that I learned to cook. 
uh, my grandmother, my, my mom's mom, uh, got me started cooking. She and her husband, uh, my grandfather, were, were both pretty good in the kitchen. And I would go, when I was little, I would go to their house, sometimes before and sometimes after school, both. Um, and like in the afternoon, we'd have merienda. And then sometimes if I was there for a long time, uh, they'd be starting to cook supper. And uh, they, and so eventually she started teaching me how to do things. Uh, and, and most things were cooked in a cast iron skillet and started with butter. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, uh, egg, eggs was uh, like, and not scrambled, but like just a sunny side up egg. Oh, wow. I, I, think tricky. Is, I, I think is the first thing that I learned. And then like right after that, uh, like tortilla soup. So mm, that's good too. You know what? Only recently I, I realized or discovered how my mom made uh, egg sandwiches. Oh. Every time I tried to make an egg sandwich, I would just like, it would just turn out like a flat scrambled egg that was just in one piece. And then I realized, like, I, I guess I asked her or something like really, like very recently, uh, she was like, well, just don't crack the egg when you pour it in there first. Just let it harden and then you crack the egg. And I was like, wait, hold on. So I did it like the next day and I was like, oh, I didn't even think to do that. I must be stupid. Uh, we have two other firsts before we get to our last one that Ryan actually introduced. It was the first, what is your first franchise that you got into? Or the first media property you got into? I guess you could do both of them if you want, but they're... for me, it's the same thing. It's uh, Final Fantasy, the video game series. Definitely, like, I, I got into that when I was uh, third grade, maybe. Um, I still love Final Fantasy. It's definitely taken a huge dive in quality in the last decade or or two but uh i i still really enjoy um most of that franchise we're doing franchises okay yeah uh when i was a kid i was really into superheroes as you saw by the first uh um uh first book i bought i was also really into dinosaurs as i mentioned before so when i saw this on the television i knew this was everything this was like crack cocaine for for, for oh Herculoids for young because it was it's superhero alien dinosaurs yeah interesting yeah I like gloop I would draw pictures of these and post them all over my house I would write stories about them I you know yeah that's awesome um I I know I know that I was into comics before. I was really into like, um, well, I mean, that's not true. I, I mean, it is true, but like, I was aware of a franchise things in television early on, uh, really as reruns, but um, you know, the, the Batman series, the Adam West live action, um i know that i was into that uh i got into comics basically as soon as i could read um and was mostly into spider-man and the x-men the first tv the, the first film franchise that i remember getting into uh is star wars and i had wondered if it was star wars or star trek because i did see the original movies of both of those in the theater. But I looked it up and I saw that uh, New Hope came out in 77 and Star Trek motion picture came out in 79. So it would it would have been Star Wars. Yeah. So that's 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 interesting because I know you're much more of a Star Trek. Uh, I, I am. I am. Well, uh, and uh, Here's the thing, uh, and this is and, and, and this may help explain that. Um, I feel like that Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars universe, is probably more realistic. I like Star Trek better because it it is actually more hopeful. There's 
there's there's less war, less political upheaval uh, in in Star Trek than in Star Wars. Well, Star Wars does also have um, religious ESP ninjas. Well, sure, but you could argue that Star Trek does with like the Vulcans and stuff. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I mean, you could make an argument for it, but uh, yeah, I I I appreciate I appreciate hopeful fiction. I feel like I do too. Actually, um, yeah. I started going through some like I started reading a lot of manga a couple of years ago like i've always read manga a lot but like a few years ago i was like you know what i'm just gonna like save some money and just get into a whole lot of stuff and just read some of the classics and i realized that i was really really bouncing off of a lot of the stories that are like needlessly dark or like edgy or whatever and i've said before berserk is one of my favorite the stories ever but berserk is very hopeful like that's kind of the theme of it is it's it's very dark and the world is very dour but there's like there is an undercurrent of like being hopeful and and like looking forward to the future and kind of fighting for that hopefulness uh whereas something like um there was another manga series called goodnight pun pun that everyone just just loves and goes nuts over and i read like a chapter of it and i was like this is this is just way too much in in that direction of like just dark and edgy and brooding and I just I couldn't handle it. Yeah. <clears throat> Only you would say Berserk is is optimistic. It's <laughs> we could get into this. And, no, it's um, not. We're we're getting toward the end of our time. Yeah. We're we're very much leading into the hour mark. So uh I'll just go on to our last first that we've got listed. What was your first under undergraduate college course? Which is I'll weird start, because um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't take one gr uh, undergrad college course. I guess I only passed one, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't just take one in, as an undergrad. You mean you mean in a semester you you had more than one at a time? Exactly. I, well, I mean, when I went to I went to school, I was at the University of Texas at Austin. And pretty much I didn't, I couldn't take anything that I wanted to take. I was required to take certain classes. Right. And all I remember is it was analog at the time. You actually had to show up at a stadium and try to find the table with that particular class and see if there were any classes left at, 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 at times that were actually usable for your, for your schedule. Right. So it was more like what is available finally. Wow. By the time I got there, it was, it was literally because the freshmen got the last choices too so literally what's left there was very little choice whatsoever in my freshman classes i the first college credit that i got was not for a class um i was well not for a specific class i got two elective hour credits of theater for going on hmm a theater tour of uh, New York uh, when I was a junior in high school. It was done through uh, Eastern New Mexico University. Uh, and and yeah, it, it, they gave you two credit hours uh, for, for going on the trip with them. Oh, if we're talking about that, then I was advanced placement, math, advanced placement, English, advanced sure. placement. Yeah. Then uh, the that semester, the 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 semester of college that I did when I was still in high school, I did <laughs> intro to computer science and mm -hmm. psychology. Mm -hmm. so. That's a fun slate. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I took like like twelve credit hours, and I passed one class. I think <laughs> my first semester, and it was a uh, intro to government or something. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually failed English. I um I didn't want to do the paper. Oh. Uh, it was like um it was like do a deep dive on the two well hold on it was 2007 and for some reason it was like do a deep dive on the presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. some reason like I had told myself like if I do this like I have a feeling I'm going to like like I don't want to get boxed in with like like making a whole political argument my first semester in this new college, like, I don't know. I was really, I was really like hesitant and and kind of uncomfortable about it. So I just didn't do the assignment and I went to turn in something. 
uh, for the professor, and she said, well, you can just toss this out because you failed the class. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I took it with another teacher and made like a B or something. But uh, yeah, I just flat out like, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that assignment. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Uh, and and I'll, I'll point out that times, times have changed um, yeah. working at the university now. We are uh, basically, we're doing everything we can to retain, retain students. Yeah. A lot of us, when we were in college, they were doing everything they can to flunk students out of classes. Yeah. And they, um, I mean, they, this, this professor retired the year or maybe even that semester after I, I took that course. So like she was, she was very much an old guard type of professor. And uh, yeah, you, everyone listening, if you're a student here, you're very lucky because you have a lot of professors who really appreciate you and enjoy having you in their class and are doing their, their utmost to help you uh, succeed in your life. So be grateful it's a significant change that's happened in the last few decades. It used to be anybody who wanted to go to college could, yeah, but they would flunk two thirds the class. Basically, is what they would do. Yeah, so. I, um, I I did want to slip in one more pop culture first question. All right, um, if you have watched any of the Doctor Who, who was your first Doctor? Tom Baker. I mean, I mean, um, uh, I lived in Dallas. Uh, 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 um, K K E R A was the first uh, station to actually show Doctor Who in the United States, yeah. and it was it was the Tom uh, uh, it was the Tom Baker years. That being said, my favorite is actually Pertwee. Um, oh, okay, solid choice. Yeah, uh, uh, I dated a girl uh, who was super into Doctor Who and got me to watch the first two. Chris Eccleston. Eccleston, yeah episodes of doctor who and then i said um i'm not really into doctor who that much and i never watched another episode okay it's not for everyone yeah. uh, I'm, the... I'm not being disrespectful i'm just saying i tried it sure i watched no. two episodes I, no, that's, I mean no that's fair i i have watched some of the things that you have said that you're very much into and i have had less enthusiasm i'm i'm surprised you got through the first gundam movie I did get through that. I also watched the first episode of Chainsaw Man. Oh, and have not watched any more of it. And, okay, and that's very it. fair because um, that's a. Although, I'm shocked to see that it's like the most popular anime of the season right now because yeah. I thought that it was going to turn away a whole lot of people, and apparently not. Yeah, uh, my my first Doctor was also Tom Baker, um, and he's pretty much the one that I look at as being my Doctor. Uh, even though when I talk about things that are quintessentially the doctor to me, he's not the person that I talk about. I actually talk about Davidson. Uh, mm -hmm. But Baker had a quote uh, during his tenure that's appropriate for this episode, which was, first things first, but not necessarily in that order. Hmm. Okay. Do 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 we want to talk about anything else? Do we want to mention anything that's going on in town, or do we want to just skip it? Um. Well, I don't know what's going on in town right now. I. <laughs> I if, have if anyone does a though. Copy, right here. All right. Okay. All right. Let's let's go over it. Let's see. All right. Uh, just just a few quick ones. Uh, everyone should check out the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU Texas during the Museum Discovery Day on January twentieth. A uh, music series at Aiken will present the Dover Quartet on February 7th. The Kiwanis will host their 67th Annual Pancake Festival on January 28th at J.S. Bridwell Ag Center. What, what Arts Life Home and Garden Festival will be at the Ray Clymer Exhibit Hall on February 25th and 26th. And as always, the Wichita Falls Public Library has story times on Thursday mornings at 1030. For more information on those, check out the events section of the MSU Texas homepage or uh, the calendar at discoverwichitafalls.com slash events. All right, sounds good. And thank you all for stopping in and listening to us. Uh, like I said before, a bunch of old white guys talking about our, our first experiences doing some stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed having this conversation, fellas. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next month with, uh, is this our first guest of the, the year? Uh, in February? Pr 
Probably. Probably. All right. We don't have anything really set in stone right now. So um, yeah, we'll we'll announce that as it gets closer along. Um, sure. uh, once again, I've been Chris. And Joe. Rigo.